What up, guys? All right, we're gonna compare some markers, see which inks perform best and worse on different surfaces. So there's paint and there's ink, and we drew on metal, we drew on glass, we drew on plastic, and we drew on wood, and we're gonna buff using methyl hydrate and off-the-shelf uh, buffing product for the metal, glass, and plastic. And then on the wood, we're gonna try it out with some paint, some bucket latex paint, and we'll see what performs best under which circumstances, and try to give you an idea of how these perform out in the wild. These are all markers you can find on our website. The link is below in the description. Make sure to let us know what you think in the comments below, and we hope this is helpful for you. So we'll be looking at the Molotow Masterpiece, the Extra Large Molotow Masterpiece, the Printmaker by On The Run, the Molotow One For All, the Crank Bleed Through, the Iron Lac Pump Action Paint Marker, Grog Cutter 15XFP, which is Extra Flow Paint. And maybe there'll be a clear winner, maybe they'll all perform differently under different circumstances. Only one way to find out is to trial and error, which we're here to do so you don't have to. All right, so first up, we've got the Molotow Paint Marker. Not to confuse with their uh, Masterpiece brand. And that just wipes right off with a bit of methyl hydrate. So that one is definitely not buff proof. Now let's see what the Molotow Masterpiece that covers all ink in it. And does that fare better? Quite a bit better. Leaves a ghost. Gonna try working that a bit more, just to be thorough, but I'm not expecting that to go anywhere. So that's definitely quite buff proof. Now with the on the run, we're gonna apply a bit of methyl hydrate. And it comes off pretty effortlessly with a bit of methyl hydrate. So that's gone. As for the iron lac paint marker, same idea. It's gone with just a bit of effort. Make sure that that's not just some clouding. And yeah, you look closely, there's nothing to be found. The tag is gone. Goodbye forever. Now with the Grog Extra Flow Paint, when we put a bit of methyl hydrate, that just comes right off. As for the crank, oh, well you look at that. That's not going anywhere. That's a beautiful ghost. So that's still there, not going anywhere. So while crink is more expensive than a lot of these other ones, you can tell why that is. The buff doesn't do much. It leaves a really opaque, clear ghost after buffing, so it's a good bang for your buck. As for this giant boy, let's see what happens. So while a bit of that comes off, for the most part, that's there to stay. So good lasting power with this ink. So the ink seem to perform much better than the paints on this metal surface. They're just deeply in there, not, not coming off. So that's a good, uh, good value. All right, now we're gonna try with the off-the-shelf buffing product, see if it performs any differently than the methyl hydrate does. Now with the Molotow One For All, let's see how that does with this product. It's staying there. And it's coming off. <laughs> As for the Molotow Masterpiece, a bit of it's coming off, but for the most part, it's staying right in there. Beyond the run paint, doesn't have the same fortune. It's coming off. Yeah, it's coming entirely off. Iron like I expect much the same from. Not on account of being iron like just on account of it being a paint-based marker on a metal surface. 
same thing with the XFP. A bit more elbow grease is needed, but it's coming off. Now as for the crank, I just like doing this. I love the drips it makes. Look at that. Beauty. All right, back to business. Buffing this just makes it look like a different colored marker. People will think you tack the same spot twice if it gets buffed. So that's a good time. And now it's for the 760 with the covers all inked. It leaves a pretty sizable ghost there. So that's a pretty good value for a metal surface. And that's, uh, that's the way she goes for markers on a metal surface. Now we're gonna try buffing these marker tags with some ethyl hydrate on our glass surface. See how it performs. I'm just gonna do a quick pass first. And then if anything survives this, we'll go ahead and try again. So already you can see some of these are just coming straight off. And then we'll try again harder on some of these. So yeah, that thing survives the power of methyl hydrate on glass. So I wouldn't spend too long worrying about which materials to use on glass because it's all gonna go away at the end of the day. And now let's try with the off the shelf buffing product and see if it gets the same results as the methyl hydrate because maybe your buff boy won't be using the methyl hydrate and you'll stand a chance Assuming that they use this, maybe not. We'll find out. This one's gone and I haven't even wiped it yet. So as you can see, all these marker tags are unilaterally to come to the buff on the glass. Don't worry too much about what you're using. It's gonna come off and it's gonna go away. Yeah, it's not a testament to the inks being used or the paints. It's really just because it's on a glass surface and uh, glass doesn't have any pores or it's very smooth. Um, and so there's nothing really for the buff to get into and sink its teeth into. So the reason why it's coming off that easily is really just about the texture it's on, not the materials being used. Um, that being said, sometimes you have a window pane or something with a lot of scratchy in it, a lot of scratchies, and that might have a bit more luck getting tagged with some of these because it'll have a lot of tooth, it'll have more um, texture to it for the inks or the paints to um, leave a mark in. Um, but that's practically a different surface as a regular smooth window pane. And I expect, I expect similar results on plexiglass. Um, but we don't have that here, so I can't say for sure. Um, but I just use caution on any uh, glass surface because it's gonna wash off, so it's not worth breaking your head for something that's gonna go away anyhow. All right, so now we're gonna try to buff these tags on this smooth plastic surface, AKA a garbage can, and see how they perform. So first we're gonna try buffing the 660 Pi Molotile covers off. See how that performs under pressure. And a lot of it's coming off. I'm wondering if this part is ghosting or if it's just a matter of me not having scrubbed enough.
Yeah, it appears to all be coming off. Um, so that's not very resilient on a plastic surface. And let's see how the crank does. The crank is doing marvelously on this smooth plastic surface. It's hardly coming off at all. So I'm very impressed by that. Um, really good value there. Good buff proof product. The crank isn't going anywhere. Look at that. Beautiful. Now for the 760. Uh, covers all ink. Definitely getting lighter. Oh yeah. And then look what happens. It's going. That's not surviving well. So while it's leaving a faint ghost, it's really not uh, not performing very well on the surface. Um, it's a bit underwhelming there, uh, but it is it does seem to be leaving a bit of a trace. No, that's that's all coming off. That's all. I'm sure I could take this off with a bit more effort as well. So that's really um, not doing so well on this plastic surface. As for the iron lac paint marker, that's also coming off. That's just about fully gone. Almost a, a bit of a ghost, but hard to read what was there before, so I'm hardly even qualifying that. And then the Molotow tag. This is the Molotow one for all tag. And it actually seems to be performing better than the covers all. There's a bit of a ghost there that's not, not trying to go anywhere. Woo. -hoo. All right, now the grog cutter. How do you do, sir? That's pretty nice. That's not going anywhere. All right, Grog, color me impressed. Let's see how the on the run does. On the run is also ghosting quite nicely. Nice to see that. The plastic is no match for this on the run recipe. So this is how the inks and paints perform with the methyl hydrate. Let's see how it does with the off-the-shelf buffing product. All right, so this is the Molotow covers off. Um, it came fully up with the methyl hydrate. Maybe it'll do better against this off-the-shelf buffing product. Nope, it's gone. How about the crank? The crank stays. The crank is super potent. So that's what I like to see. It's very resilient. As for the covers all, it's not covering all on this surface. That's for sure. It's coming off um, with both buffing materials. So that's unfortunate. As for the iron lac paint, it also comes off quite easily with the off-the-shelf buffing product. Um, the Molotow one for all. It's 
seems to be doing better with this product than it did with the methyl hydrate. Or maybe not. No, it's actually doing less well. It's hardly ghosting at all with this. So that's something you have to be aware of. It performs less well with some buffing products than others. So do be careful with the Molotow one for all. Now the Grog Cutter 15XSP. It left quite a ghost with the methyl hydrate, but it might do, perform differently with the off-the-shelf product. Oh, look at that. Coming right off. As for the on the run, with the off-the-shelf product. It's also buffing very easily. And so there you have it. The only one that survives the off-the-shelf buff product on plastic is the crank, bar none. So the crank doing very well in this buff test on this surface, for those of you who are a fan. Um, if you own the other ones or if you're looking to get the other ones, don't be alarmed. Just know that you should be careful on plastic surfaces uh, because many products get buffed very easily on it. All right, so now we're gonna try and cover these tags with some paint, some latex bucket paint, and see if any of them survive uh, the usual way of buffing on a painted surface. If any, we're gonna do this in a few parts. If any of these survive, we're gonna try and apply a second coat and see if they make it through that and then apply coats till it's done. Um, and yeah, curious to see which ones perform and how. All right, so we apply the first coat of paint and the, the K73 crank bleed through uh, lives up to its name. It's bleeding right through, so uh, that's really satisfying to watch. The covers all by Molotow is coming a bit through, but um, not very well. So maybe with different paints it would come through more, but right now you can barely see what was written there. Everything else is pretty much gone. So the crank K73 bleed through is uh, really a satisfying sight right now to just see it totally unaffected by the paint. All right, so as you can see, uh, we've tried to buff all these different tags on all these different surfaces. And um, on the glass, it was basically um, moot. Everything got buffed really easily. Um, so there's no point trying to use anything that's hard to buff on glass. It'll just get wiped right off. As far as the garbage goes, um, the crank did very well. Um, Yeah, the crank outperformed everything on the garbage. Uh, everything else got pretty much buffed. Um, with the graffiti removing product, some of them fared better than others with the uh, methyl hydrate, but all in all, only the crank really survived to both. Uh, it also performed really well on the buff test. As far as painting on a painted surface goes, it really takes several coats to get covered up. And then as far as the metal surface goes, the Molotov covers all, um, leaves a really good ghost, and the crank um, bleed through also just, you barely know it, that they tried to buff it. So both of those do very well on metal. Also, if you're feeling clever and you think that by combining inks from one that performs well on one surface and another that does well on another, do be advised not to mix paint and inks the chemical properties get very wobbly if you do, and it can be toxic, it can be bad for your health, it can have adverse effects. So please don't mix paint and ink unless you really know what you're doing. Bad stuff can happen and I strongly advise you not to do that. You can find all of these products in the description below. Let us know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching and have a great day.